Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trek on Tuesday. My name is Aaron. We've got an interesting show coming up today. We're going to talk to you guys about photography, taking pictures, how you can share those photos with your friends, through social media, through other parents in your pack or uh, unit, uh, troop or venturing crew, how you can use that to sort of spread goodwill and maybe recruit some new members. We've got a couple of what I would, I think it's safe to say experts, BSA experts in photography. They're gonna join us in just a minute. Uh, my name is Aaron. Neither me nor my co my co guest right here, Kendra, are experts in photography. We are here to talk to you very, very briefly about something else, kind of an important announcement. Kendra is the uh, manager of, maybe manager is not the right word, digital fundraising sort of expert, go to person at the BSA. Uh, Kendra, first of all, this is kind of last minute. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, happy to be here. So you guys might be aware that there is a wildfire at Philmont Scout Ranch happening right now. Um, things are looking, I think it's safe to say, okay. You know, you never want to uh, celebrate until it's over. But this is not does not appear to be like it was a few years ago where Philmont had to cancel an entire summer's worth of activities, I believe, due to a wildfire. So shout out to all the folks who are out there at Philmont doing their part, helping out right now, literally, you know, putting out fires, mm -hmm. putting out a wildfire. We could do a whole show on that, Kendra, about all the work that's going on out there right now. But what Kendra is here to talk to us about today is how you can help, how you, the viewer, can help. Um, there is a, a fundraising push right now to help out uh, Philmont Fire Relief. Kendra, just kind of give us an overview of what's going on and what people can do. Yeah, of course. So really grateful to be here today, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, so I wanted to take a minute to just kind of talk about how our scouting family can come together and help support the uh, fire recovery and mitigation efforts uh, at Philmont Scout Ranch. So on April 27th, um, the Cook's Peak fire began burning near the southern border of Philmont. And within a few days, 75 mile an hour winds pushed the fire um, over the Philmont property line. And at that point, uh, the staff at the Philmont Scout Ranch was evacuated. Well, they were also scrambling to pr protect the property. Um, the staff and hundreds of volunteers came together to uh, uh, push together the, the fire recovery and mitigation efforts. Um, this, this included removing hundreds of, of cattle uh, and livestock from the property, um, and, and wrapping cabins and fire uh, retardant materials, um, and also retrieving uh, items from cabins within the uh, across the property. Unfortunately, some of the uh, some buildings on the property were lost to the fire, and I believe three to four thousand acres were lost to the fire as well. Um, but at this point. The fire is about 75% or I'm sorry, 97% uh, contained, uh, possibly a little bit more than that. However, there's still a constant threat of wildfires to New, Me to New Mexico and the Philmont Scout Ranch. And um, this is a continued threat that uh, the property will face. And um, part of what we can do to protect the property is support the mitigation, recovery, and conservation efforts uh, that are needed. So we're asking our scouting family to come together and uh, donate to these efforts. Um, you can do that online. There's a, a, a link that we'll provide during the show uh, where we can go. Yes, right there. Uh, this is where you can go to uh, support and donate. Um, and 100% of your don donation is going to go towards Philmont in these recovery efforts. Um, we hope that you uh, provide your support and um, if you can follow the Philmont uh, Facebook page and also on the uh, Philmont website is a constant update of, uh, of what's going on with the wildfires. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, the livestock and cattle. I think people forget, I forget, that Philmont is a working ranch. There's, there's, there's yes. cattle out there. Those had to be escorted to safety. Um, a, a lot of folks you probably know, Philmont Scout Ranch is known for its, its gorgeous backcountry, right? Uh, just acres and acres and acres 
of pristine backcountry, there are some structures kind of scattered around. And so that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Some of them did take a little bit of damage. Uh, as Kendra noted, 97% contained sounds good. It's not over until it's over. I think it's probably mm -hmm. safe to say, Kendra, every donation counts. Uh, we appreciate yes. anything you can do. Um, obviously, uh, you know, Philmont, as I've, I've heard it call a lot of different things, the pinnacle of scouting. Uh, it's kind of our, it's one of the coolest things we have, frankly. There's a, there's a lot of cool things in scouting. Philmont is right there at the top. Uh, again, shout out to the folks who are out there right now, especially our friend Jack, who submitted uh, these photos. I think most of these photos, if not all of them. And as Kendra said, anything you can do to help, we appreciate it. Any, Kendra, anything else folks should know about the fire and about the fundraising efforts? Um, just that this is going to be a, a, a continuous effort uh, for, for Boy Scouts of America and for Philmont. Um, just because the fire is at 97% contained um, doesn't mean that this threat is over. This is something that we'll continue to face. And these efforts help us uh, support the property and ensure that we continue to offer the programs at the property each summer. Excellent, excellent. And year yeah. round. Yeah, and, and I know that um, a lot of scouts, when they go visit Philmont, they do fire mitigation service projects. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as Kendra said, this is an ongoing effort. Uh, even once this you know, threat is completely done with, efforts will continue. Again, everybody watching, uh, we appreciate anything you can do. And as always, we encourage you forward this to your friends. If you know anybody who's been to Philmont before, uh, anybody who's worked out there, anybody who's ever visited out there is certainly you know, leaves an impression on your heart and your mind and your spirit. Uh, Kendra, thank you so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to talk about this. So thanks, have a great day. Awesome, thanks so much, you too. Appreciate it, everybody. Uh, again, anything you can do to help out with Philmont would be appreciated. We're gonna move on now to our main topic of the day, um, photography how to take good pictures. Um, the photography merit badge is part of scouting. And as with a lot of our merit badges, uh, you know, there's things in there, even if you don't care about earning a merit badge, if you're a Cub Scout, um, if you're just a, a Scout volunteer, there are a lot of good photography tips in that photography merit badge. We're gonna be using that as the basis of some of our discussion today, but I wanna bring on our very special guest, guest number one, kind of our co-host today, my good friend, my longtime friend and coworker, Edna. Uh, Edna is the photo editor of the BSA Publishing Division. Edna joins us today live. How are you doing, young woman? Good, good. Thank you for having me on. Yes, awesome. Well, I can't think of any better expert to have, both as a co-host and a photographer expert. But I think the star of the show today, Edna, the true star of the show is our, he doesn't like to be, we'll just call him a photographer. His name is Michael. He's kind of like the chief photographer of the BSA. Uh, Michael, do you do you read me? There he is. Yes, Michael, how are you doing today? Michael, you might be muted. Okay, there you go. Sorry, say that again, Michael. We missed you there. I said thank you for having me, but you two are the big stars here. Well, that's thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, listen real quick, guys. Speaking of big stars, uh, this is like the third week going on that we haven't done a show with our good friend Gina. So I just want to make a, a very special announcement to let everybody know Gina has had a child, everybody. Gina has had a baby. Give a shout out to Gina in your comments. She and her husband off, uh, Austin and her new daughter Stella are doing great. No one really cares about the husband Austin, right? But uh, we do care <laughs> about Gina and her baby. So I know she, she, she might be watching. Who knows? She might not have anything better to do. Shout out in the comments. Congratulations to Gina. We're going to miss you. She's going to take some time to be a mom. Hopefully we'll get her back here down the road at some point. But in the meantime, we've got some very capable folks like these two people right here next to me joining us today uh, to talk about photography. Uh, to get the conversation started, Michael, um, let's start with the basics. So one of the things that you do sometimes is you talk to scouts who are going on outings mm -hmm. and trips and things like that about taking good photos. And you guys probably have things planned for the summer, summer camp. We talked about that. Cub Scout day camp. Maybe it's just a scout outing you're going on, a venturing crew outing, whatever it is. It's a great opportunity to get some good photos. We'll talk about maybe a little bit later about how you can use those photos uh, to, you know, to your advantage. But when it comes to just photography 101, Michael, where do we start? What do folks need to know? 
Well, a simple place to start is composition. And uh, we really like to think uh, uh, an easy rule to remember is a rule of thirds. So if we take a photo, um, and I think if Brian can help us bring up an image here, uh, we've yep. got them in the can. So the rule of thirds, uh, we this is hang on one second while we get this photo up here. Um, it's, uh, it's very simple, very basic. So we have this, this picture here. These are two young ladies from a troop in Pennsylvania. They were on an outing uh, this past, past summer, uh, and I shot this picture. It's not a bad shot. I've centered them right perfectly. So, um, but you know what? After I look at this picture, I think it's a little boring. And here's where I'd like to introduce the rule of thirds. Brian, next slide, please. So if we, if we divide this file with these lines, these are imaginary lines, I've drawn them in here on this photo, we have the subject uh, smack dab right in the center of that picture, don't we? It's very symmetrical. And the eye doesn't like real symmetrical items. Now we do have the reflection there on the bottom, but I wonder if we can make this photo a little more interesting. So Brian, next slide. So this is all the same slide. I've just kind of recropped it. So I have them um, uh, over on the far left-hand side in that uh, third quadrant, or the, I'm sorry, the first quadrant. So Brian, if we can lay that uh, next slide in, please. Um, so you'll see the lines are gonna apply. So they're over in that far left-hand corner. But the problem there is, I think, is we don't see or we don't have room to imagine what they're seeing at the end of that dock. It's kind of a hard, abrupt stop. So I wonder, Brian, the next slide, please, if we move them all the way over to the right-hand side, and now it's a lot more interesting. We can see what they're seeing out there, and we can lay the lines of thirds in again. And you'll see that they're over on that far right-hand side. So the rule of thirds, we divided the picture both horizontally and vertically in thirds. As you can see there, so there's nine sections or nine quadrants. And we really like to place the action of whatever our photo is at the intersection of those rules that we've, or the lines, excuse me, that we've drawn in there. Um, th that makes it more interesting, more pleasing uh, for the viewers to take a look at. Um, so try that, and, and that's just a simple rule of thirds, and it works, works both vertically and horizontally, uh, and the example that I had there is a horizontal shot, but it applies vertically as well. It'll just make your uh, photos more pleasing, more interesting, and people will, will take a look and, and focus on them a little bit longer. You'll keep their interest in what they're seeing. Hey, Michael, can we adopt this rule for both our uh, cameras and our phone cameras? Yes, yeah, great question. Um, you know, they always say the best, uh, a lot of people ask me, Michael, what's the best camera? I always tell them it's the camera that I have in my hand or on me. So, uh, I mean, I love taking pictures with my iPhone when I turn it on here. <laughs> um, uh, and you, you can apply the rule of thirds to your iPhone, to your video phones, uh, or video uh, applications, or video uh, devices. Uh, rule of thirds, uh, it, it's also used in, in artwork also. Um, and it applies to, to picture taking with your iPhone. Awesome, very, very cool. We got a few shout outs here real quick. Xavier from PAC 817 in uh, Florida uh, is watching. Thank you, Xavier, for watching. Uh, Chris says, howdy from Troop 3 in Mexico City. We always have a, a nice little mix of international viewers on this show, which we really appreciate that. Chris, thanks for watching. Gwen says, howdy from PAC 3138 and Scouts BSA Troop 714 in Minnesota. Thank you for watching, Gwen. Rob says, the world famous Michael Roytek. I know, Rob. 
I know. Can you believe it? We got the world famous Michael Roytek here. Uh, and then we've got a few people, uh, quite a few people saying congratulations to Gina. We appreciate that. Xavier says congrats, Gina. I knew he would do that. Connie from PAC 197 in Ocala, Florida says congratulations. V uh, Vanessa says congratulations. We appreciate that. Rob says, looking forward to seeing all the photos from the trip you took with us, Michael. I think Michael did travel with Rob recently. We also yes. got a shout out from, uh, is it, is it, is it Qatar? I think how you pronounce it, Q-A-T-A-R. I've never been good at pronouncing the name of that country, but um, we appreciate you watching as well. Um, we've talked about the rule of thirds, uh, Michael, kind of a basic what? key. You know what, yes. That rule of thirds works all around the world. Okay. So there every, you go. It's around, the, yep. Yes. It's the Everyone international the language. World. Yeah, the international language of photography. There you go. It doesn't matter where, where you are. Perfect. Yes. Uh, rule of thirds. We've also talked about how it works with um, uh, smartphones. You don't have to have necessarily a super fancy camera. I've talked to a few photographers, Michael and some others. You guys are surprisingly uh, not snobbish about smartphones, which I appreciate. I think you guys understand, like you said, the best camera is the one that you can carry with you in your pocket. Not everybody wants to carry around a big giant camera that they have to lug around with them. Very convenient. Let's talk about a couple of other aspects of photography. Michael, uh, I wanna start with something, or I wanna ask you next about something, uh, action. We have a lot of photos mm -hmm. submitted to us of folks smiling and looking at the camera. They're very cute, uh, especially if they're Cub Scouts, right? Very, very cool. But there might be maybe a better way to do it. Michael, what do you think? Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at these. There's, we can give some pointers and uh, you can apply these to your shots that you're going to be out taking this summer at, at, at summer camp or at your day camp. Or if, you're, if your troop or pack or den or ship is out this weekend, try to apply these rule of thirds. And we're going to take a look at some photos here and how they might, be, uh, might improve upon them. Great start, but we, we always can uh, try and make them a little better. Yeah. There's some action. So on this, one, yeah, it is. They're jumping uh, on this uh, uh, on this uh, big water uh, uh, trampoline. I think this it's actually what it is there. But see, they've applied the rule of thirds. That trampoline isn't dead center. It's in the lower part of the of the thirds. And I should mention, Aaron, and and Edna will back me up on this. Every rule in photography is meant to be broken. So we just use the rule of thirds as a starting point uh, that we want you to try and think about. Uh, but it, it's okay sometimes to put things dead center, like those two young ladies on that dock. Uh, but here we've got a nice action. We see a we see a scout coming down the slide there, entering the water, and we've got a young man that's up on the trampoline. I'm glad to see they've all got their uh, personal flotation devices <laughs> on. Uh, safety is our number one thing. Having fun is number two. Can we talk so, about how do we grab uh, the the facial expression? How do we know mm -hmm. how to, to time that? Is it you know when the action is happening? How do we zoom in on that and blur out everything that's in the back? Perfect example that, right here of a facial expression that kind of tells a story, right? I love the look on his face, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question, Edna. And, and this is a nice example here. He's not looking at the camera, is he? He's looking at his, bud, his buddy uh, next to him there. And, and this is a moment they're really having fun here. And they really don't know that that camera is sitting there or that person is taking this picture. And it could be, and most likely, that person may have been sitting there for a while because the longer you sit with your camera, the more that they're going to forget that you're around and you won't be, they won't notice you. And that's real important. You want to blend in with the surroundings and what, and what is happening. And you just got to be ready. You've got to have that camera ready to uh, take pictures. Well, that's now, a great point, Michael. No, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, so, that's, that's a, um, Edna. Go ahead, you Edna. You go next. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, lighting. Lighting is such, so important, whether it's ambient lighting or artificial light. Most of the time, I like my pictures. I'd rather they be dark so <laughs> you don't see me, so I just blend in. Uh, any recommendations on that? 
Yeah, so on this photo here, uh, it's a very flat lighting. It, it, th we're indoors or we're inside a covered area. Uh, we've got light coming down. And uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of shadow on her face, pretty evenly lit. But look at Edna's face right now. There's a lot of shape to her face because that side light, the window where she's got the uh, windows drawn is bringing some light in there. But on her left-hand side, it's a little dark, darker. So it gives her it gives her face some shape as opposed to me. I'm very flat lit. Aaron's not quite totally flat lit, but there's a, oh, look what happened right there. So he's turned <laughs> off the green light. But, but now what happened? Now we can see his smile. We can see his eyes. So it's real important. <clears throat> it's real important to be able to see those details. I'm very flat lit. I'm actually in our production studio right now. And if I take my glasses off, I can't see anything now. But it is, I'm, you know, it's very evenly lit here on both sides. I would turn one light off, but I've got my overheads on, and I don't think it would uh, affect it much. But Aaron, if you could, if you could flip your ring light off and just yep. watch what the t uh, the mood it just presented there. You know, it's it's uh, you, you can't see a whole lot. First of all, we can't dark. see his eyes very well. It's very dark, and but flip him back on, and voila, he comes back to life. And we can see that expression. And that's really what we want to see in our photos. Uh, and I encourage you to try and, and look into the person's eyes that you're photographing. Excellent, excellent. We got a few more comments here real quick. Hello from Troop 770 in Irving, Texas. They're right down the road from where you are right oh. now, Michael. Thank you guys for watching yep. Troop 7070. Rusty says hi from Pack 84 in New Philadelphia, Ohio. Thank you, Rusty and Todd is watching from Troop 601 in Farmingdale, New York. We got a nice variety, folks, all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, all over the world watching today. Um, you said something, Michael, that I thought was really interesting about um, uh, kind of being patient, I think, and capturing those those mm -hmm. those moments. If you're on a, uh, say, a summer camp out or a Cub Scout day camp this summer, or even a scout outing, probably a good idea when you when you go to take photos maybe don't make a big deal out of it right you don't need to get everybody right. lined up in a row hey guys let's stop everything down instead uh you know kind of get out in front of the action or and try to get some photos of them going towards the camera i think yeah and, and this photo like you say that young man probably doesn't even realize that he's having his photos taken and i'll be danged if it didn't turn into a a great photo um mm -hmm. quick question about speaking of lighting Michael, um, some depending on your your setting on your camera or your phone, uh, in certain low light conditions, the flash might go off. Um, can you talk about the use of a flash? You have some fancy schmancy lighting there in the studio, uh, but I think in most conditions, people aren't going to have access to that, right? What can you tell yeah, us about so flash it, photography, pros and cons? Yes. So let me go back to if I could jump back on lighting and, and Brian, if we go back to that shot, um, there there's two times during the day that we really like the natural light. Then I'll go to, I'll answer your question on artificial light. So we refer to it as the golden hour. And that's the hour before sunrise and the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset and the hour after sunset. And I would imagine that these cyclists, um, I'm just going to guess that this is probably sunset. And um, it's just really a nice quality of light. We actually see the light. So the light source here, the sun, is actually part of the subject of this photograph. And I love that uh, we know where we're going, right? We're going we're gonna to ride our bicycles down this road. Uh, and we've got the mountains over on the right-hand side. Uh, it's a great framing uh, of this photograph with the mountains on, on the right-hand side. So you're not always going to have um, the perfect time to photograph during that golden hour. It may be at 12 noon when the sun is coming directly from above and down, and it's going to cost, cast shadows on us. So sometimes we're going to want, and let's see if I can't <clears throat> program my camera to turn on the flash here. It may not go off because... Yeah. I was just, as Michael's doing that, I was just going to say, depending on your camera settings, it might want to flash sometimes when you don't want it to flash. It might not flash sometimes right. when you do want it to flash. Be sure and look in your camera settings. Uh, go ahead, Michael. So, um, yes, and some of them we can uh, 
I'm just going to move my, my computer around just a little bit. Um, we can turn that flash on or we can turn it off. Um, and sometimes you may not have control over it because on our smartphones, a lot of times they will compensate for low light automatically. They may go to a slower shutter speed or they may go to a, a uh, uh, open up the aperture on it. Uh, the basic cameras, you don't have control over uh, setting the shutter speed and aperture, but there are some apps on both platforms that you can manipulate like you would on a normal camera, shutter speed and aperture. But if we can't, another thing that we can do, and I'm just going to roll my chair back, uh, we talked about <clears throat> uh, lighting and, and we don't have a flash, we can actually use a bounce card, and I apologize, my my uh, camera on my laptop here is probably going to compensate. But as you see, as I move it in a little bit closer, if I can get some light on, it's filling. Yeah, look at my beard on the left, on my right here is darker and it's lighter on the other side. It's because of that bounce card. So, and a bounce, we call it a bounce card. This is, it's a foam core, but anything, and I just don't have it handy right here, a piece of paper, a white piece of paper, and I see that I'm frozen. A white piece of paper will work just too. So if we've got to shoot a portrait, why not bring a bounce card in and to highlight and to, to light? So if I take off my glasses, you'll see that that's helped lighting my, my eye sockets a little bit, okay? And you can play around and it's real easy just to, if you want that mood, if we, if we want that lighting like we had on Edna's face there, we can, we can uh, simulate that uh, with adding a bounce card. Now, what happens if this is a green bounce card, you think, Aaron? If the bounce card is green, it's going to make Edna you knows the look, answer to this. this it's going to make you look a tinge like you're a little seasick. Yes. So remember, <laughs> light reflects whatever color it sees. So if this was purple, it would give a purple cast to my face. So keep that in mind. If you go to grab a piece of construction paper, uh, make sure that's what you want to show. But white will always reflect white. Um, a lot of times we'll use black as a negative light source to help knock down light. So this we can employ when we're doing our portraits. Like what are mm -hmm. some good examples of some work that our viewers can kind of practice while they're out and they can submit some photos to us? I, you know, maybe like an action shot. What are some areas where they can take seize the moment and start to take photos and kind of practice and get better at the craft. Yeah. One of the things that's real important when, when if you're going out on a hike, um, you either kind of got to make a decision. Am I going to be in the photography role or am I want to be in a participant role and actually participate in what's happening? Because it's real tough to do both. Because as a photographer, you want to just be ready for that moment when it happens. And if we're over here, uh, you know, making, um, um, you know, we're doing a Dutch oven or a, a making a cobbler in a Dutch oven, uh, then, you know, it, it's hard to um, uh, do both. But if we're over with our camera, we can get that as they lift the lid off the Dutch oven and see the steam rising from the, uh, the heat and smell the, um, uh, what we're, we're making brownies, right, Edna, in our Dutch oven? We are. We are. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Aaron's made homemade ice cream, so we're going to add that. And, and that smile, see what I just, they both smiled up. And those are the type photos we want. We want to see that big, uh, that big smile when they bite into that uh, brownie and that homemade ice cream. Uh, I would prefer vanilla, please. Uh, on my uh, perfect on my brownies noted perfect <laughs> we have an, food another... is always a great one i'm sorry no no go ahead go but ahead food is always the food is always a great one to look around we don't want pictures of people feeding their faces but you know holding if we can say this is my my brownie and i've already eaten the ice cream let me see there we go. Thank you. Uh, we've already eaten the ice cream, but you know, you know, I'm looking at, gosh, this really looks good. See, I'm not looking at camera. This is what we call camera aware. 
we are looking at the camera and that's not as interesting as I think, wow, I can't wait to get my, get this brownie in my mouth. You know, it's going to taste so good. <laughs> so, so you're, making, you're making me hungry. I'm hungry right now, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. And we, well, we just got, you just got to be patient and be ready with whatever, whatever camera you have. And that might be that phone. So here we go. It looks like we're doing uh, arts and crafts here. It looks like we've got some paints and this is probably um, at a Cup Scout day camp, probably might be. And it looks like we're, we're making something. So, um, you know, we just, we just got to wait for the right moment. Um, Rusty echoes that sentiment. Rusty says in the comments, the best picture is the one that is taken spontaneous. Agree, Rusty? I yeah. think that's pretty, yeah. pretty good advice right there. I think the, one of the maybe more understandable, I don't want to say mistakes, but one of the things that people like to do, us grownups like to do, is when kids are having fun, we tell them, hey, stop having fun, stand still and look at the camera for a picture. Why not just take a photo of them having fun? Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, speaking of having fun, I've got one more funny comment I wanna share with you guys from our good friend Xavier, who's watching from Florida. Xavier lets us, wants to let us know that he saw a turtle on his back porch today. Uh, it first tried to escape by going under a shovel um, but it couldn't find the holes that it fit through. So it finally found a big opening in the fence. The turtle did escape in case you were, guys were concerned. Thank you for sharing that, Xavier. Maybe next time that happens, get us a photo. Send it to us. Yeah, we'd we love to see a photo. Of that. That'd be a cool photo right there, a little action shot of the turtle and trying you to know escape. What? And what you need to do is you need to get down on that turtle's level and yeah. get on your belly and crawl get around. Down there and we call that. Take a photo. Right. We call that the worm's eye view. I call it the worm's eye view. So we want to get on the level of our subject. That gives us a lot of perspective there. And we can see we can see that from the and here we go. This is a great example of what I call a bird's eye view. So we're up above looking down as this young lady, I believe, uh, is getting ready to make that next move up this climbing wall. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Michael, we've talked a lot about how to take photos. We have just a few more minutes with Michael Adenda today. Let's finish our discussion by talking about what you can do with those photos once you've taken them. Yep. Um, everybody mm -hmm. loves to post pictures of, of their kids uh, smiling on social media. What can you do maybe with some good scout action -y photos that show those, you know, real fun expressions? What are some of the advantages you think of, of, of sharing those? Well, we, we sure hope that each of our troops and, and especially our troops have a troop historian. And that's one area to, to filter those photos so they get um, uh, recorded uh, with the troop. Another thing, we would love to see your photos. And I think we've got a tagline here, uh, Scout yep. Life uh, Mag with your photos. That way we'll be able to take a look. Everyone around the world will be able to see what we're doing this summer and uh, have that opportunity uh, to share. But it also is a great way of, of letting everyone else know, hey, we're having fun here. Uh, you know, we're doing this cobbler, and we, you know, we've got some great photos, great camaraderie uh, with our friends. And uh, we can do that through, you know, all the, all the social media outlets uh, share. Uh, one of, the, one of the main things to do, though, is make sure everyone understands that you may be sharing these photos, is basically asking permission. And that's real, real important. Uh, we can picture if they don't want us uh, uh, taking that photo. Well, that's a great point there. You never know when you're going to accidentally take an amazing photo of, of a young scout, share it online. And who knows if, if, if Scout Life Mag, you tag Scout Life Mag and we'd like it, we share it in front of a, a, a large audience. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we have their permission, make sure they know that you're taking photos and that you'd like to share them online. Great discussion, everybody. Mm -hmm. One last note before we let you go. In addition to tagging us in your photos, we also want to know just in general what you guys have planned for this, uh, the rest of the spring, this summer, into the fall. If you have a, an outing planned, there is a way you can tell us yeah. about it. Who knows? You might see that outing in Scout Life magazine. There's the URL right now. It's on our con uh, Contact Us page uh, on the scoutlife.org website. If you find the Contact Us page, as you see there, you'll see some different categories of different things. You can tell us about service projects. You can tell us about different crafts and things like that you've done. You can tell us about your Eagle Scout project. 
What we really want to know about is upcoming scout adventures that you might be going on. Uh, if it's in a scout's mm -hmm. life, it's in scout life is what we like to say. Let us know what you have going <laughs> yep. on. Take some great photos, folks, this spring and the summer. Uh, share them with don't us. Forget Michael, us. don't forget to tag us. Exactly. Thank you, Edna. Uh, Michael, any last final words before we let you go? Let me go. One of the things I want to I'm, I'm meant to mention is that when we're using the iPhone, keep your elbows uh, in uh, against your body like this, so you're you're steady when you're taking pictures, and you won't you don't want to go like this because you'll be wobbly. Keep them in, and this works with any camera. You want your elbows in, rest on your stomach, and you can take some great photos. And we'd love to see those photos. Please send them in to us. Absolutely, that's great advice. There, I'm going to practice real quick here, guys. Let me see if I can get this photo to turn out. And I've tried to use the rule of thirds. Let me see if I can show. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the best photo I've ever taken, but you know, it's, it's all right. It's not too bad. Uh, hey, Edna, you know and Michael, I'll get with you and give you some private lessons. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm going to need a little extra help, I think, Michael. Edna, great job today. Thank you for joining us. Michael, of yeah, course, yeah. thanks to you. We appreciate you guys watching. As always, guys, this video will stay on this Facebook page after we're done. Please share it with friends. If you know somebody who's into photography, they might enjoy watching this. If you know somebody who, like Michael said, is the historian for uh, your trip or, or your scout troop or your pack unit, share this with them. It's a great way to keep records of your, your scout adventures, a great way to kind of spread the word about scouting and if nothing else, spread goodwill. Once again, Edna and Michael, thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching us at home. We will see you next week on Trek on Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, -bye. Send us your photos. <laughs>